Hey everybody, it is Wednesday and we are here at Wild Care with Marla, the amazing Western Pond Turtle. Of course, we have Melissa, our Wildlife Program Ambassador, Wildlife Ambassador Program Manager. Yeah. And we have Vladimir who is apparently supervising today. Yes. So we are out in the courtyard. You can see it's an absolutely beautiful day here at Wild Care. We actually have some sun, some bluish skies. It's all very exciting. Melissa, what are we talking about today? So uh, I thought it'd be interesting to talk about brumation or um, for mammals that would be hibernation because if you come to Wild Care or you volunteer at Wild Care, you'll see these um, wildlife go through all the different changes that they normally would in the wild. Sure. Um, so just because they're in captivity, uh, doesn't change that instinct. So brumation is hibernation, and usually uh, that happens uh, is triggered by cold weather, light patterns, um, barometric pressure, and that is how um, they hibernate or brumate during the cold winter months. Um, that's important for them to, so everything pretty much slows down. So their metabolism slows down. We start to know that they're getting ready to grow in brumation for um, any of the reptiles that we have is they start to not uh, move a lot. They're real lethargic and sure. not eat a lot. And um, so for these guys, for the Western Pond Turtles, they'll actually uh, brumate in mud. So either above or below the water. How interesting. Yes, so yes. they actually bury themselves into mud? They bury themselves into mud. Um, during the summer months, they can hold their breath for about 15 minutes underwater. Okay. Um, but that can increase during brumation. Because everything slows down in their systems, everything right? Everything yeah, slows down sense. in their systems. And um, that's important, obviously, because if it's cold, you know, there's not going to be um, a lot of sunlight, which is because they're ectothermic, meaning they're going to get their energy, they're, they're heating up from the sun. Right. So if you don't have a lot of sun during the cold winter months, you know, it's, that's a, a waste of energy. I like to say that everybody, uh, all the wildlife are energy efficient, and that definitely goes for our reptiles here. Um, of course, then the food also would be less during the colder winter months, not right. such a variety. And speaking of food, um, she is an omnivore, or Western pond turtles are omnivores. Uh, they'll eat insects, uh, any type of invertebrates. They can eat algae. They can eat um, the roots of cattails and lilies. What um, about this green stuff? What and is this? water lettuce. Ooh. They can definitely eat the water lettuce here, which is what I've been growing. Um, in the back of the facility, I've been growing a bunch of water lettuce, and you can kind of see the little sprigs off here. It's so interesting. I feel like I haven't seen this stuff. Is it common uh, everywhere? Yes, yes. It's it's uh, in one of. The, it's actually right before you go into the raptor aviary for the guys. Oh, okay. In big tub. Oh, sure. Um, so they have really, really long roots. Uh, she could eat these if she would like. Oh. Um, if they're a big cluster of them together. Um, she can actually go out and bask on them and hold her up. She can climb up on them? Yeah, she oh, can climb up so on them and bask. Marla, it's I your know, cue. You I should know. come and do it. She's not being her usual camera hogging self. Right, right. Is because, that perhaps yes, because she's entering yes, into brumation? She's going into brumation, so it's much, much uh, lethargic much for her. much more lethargic, much more calm. Yeah. Here's our Miss Marla. Isn't she amazing? Remind us again, how old is Marla? So we think her date of birth is 1979, so okay. that makes her 41, which is quite old. Wow. Um, they can live to be about 50 years old. Wow. And the reason she came to us was she was uh, surrendered to us. Okay. And um, the lady who had her um, probably found her very young, maybe thought that she was um, you know, needed to be rehabbed or in trouble. Well, she has that injured front foot that we can't really see. She does. See, and that it's was our theory. That's right, her left foot, exactly. And that's been our, our working theory, I mm -hmm. think, at Wild Care that, that that injured foot, whoever saw her, thought that that meant that she probably wouldn't survive, so they did take her in as a pet. Mm -hmm. And so she lived with that family until eventually the woman who had her passed away, mm -hmm. and they needed a place to take her. And because she's a reptile, she's not able to be just released back into right, the wild right. and um, because she would have been exposed to pathogens or you know diseases or various things that you wouldn't want to carry back to the wild population her shell is a is a different color too that shell rot stuff yes. that would be a reason not to release her again too right right um so that is could be just um lack of variety of nutrition 
Mm -hmm. um, so uh, back in 1979, perhaps when this lady took her, you know, probably didn't know that much about the nutrition, you know, right. as we're always learning. Something that I love about wild care and about wildlife rehabilitation in general is that it's a constantly evolving mm -hmm. science. Mm -hmm. I just think it's so interesting. I mean, every, you know, it seems like every year, every day, they find out something new and different about these animals that science didn't really know before. So it's really a cool thing. Yeah, and they are a threatened species. Uh-huh, the western so, pond turtle is. Is that because of habitat loss primarily? Habitat loss, um, floods, drought. Out, uh, and the invasion of the red-eared slider. Oh, the red-eared slider. Yes, yes, yes. So it's competition. Everybody's pet turtle when they were kids. Yes, and they think, oh, this is a great pond area. I'm just going to let it go. Well, it uh, outcompetes the western pond turtle here. Um, right. They're found all the way from uh, western Washington down into um, Baja, California. So they are in areas where it does freeze over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, climate change would definitely affect them as well. Um, sure. And water being too cold or too hot, for that matter. Oh, yeah. Um, and, of course, that would affect, you know, what they can eat. You know, I mean, if they were going to eat, you know, invertebrates, insects, and also fish. I forgot to mention fish. You know, that's going to be... She's quite the little hunter, too, she isn't she? She actually... Uh -huh, little our friend Marla here. Yeah, I call her our only, um, the only carnivore western <laughs> turtle because we've tried to give her water lettuces and all sorts of different um, nice plant material we think she'll eat and she's like nope nope I'm just gonna go ahead and eat the animals just gonna go ahead and eat the meat that you give us yep yep, yep exactly so she eats so once a week so we give her um, her her food once a week um, reptiles don't have to eat every day like other animals do again slower um, slower metabolisms so and she's <laughs> absolutely great and she's got such a personality she does have such a personality oh she absolutely she has preferences she has mm -hmm. people she likes people she doesn't like she has activities she likes and she actually hangs out with uh, mojave our um, desert tortoise and you when we get these two out in the courtyard you know they run in different directions but she is very very fast she is zippy. Yes, yeah, she exactly. is quite zippy. It's amazing how fast these guys can travel on land. Yeah, and she loves to, to run around the um, the courtyard here, and they can spend about two hundred days outside of the water oh. a year. Up oh, no to. kidding! Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. a lot more time out of the water than I would expect for a yeah, turtle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, of course, you know, most commonly you'll see these guys basking on a log, you know, warming up for the day. Here we have the vulture watching Melissa talk yeah. about Marla. <laughs> yes. This is making me laugh really hard. Yep. Yeah. He's a great educator as he well. He is. Absolutely. Um, you know, he's also a great foreman. He's got to make sure that we're doing everything oh, correctly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, a couple of differences between tortoises and turtles is that they have a lightweight shell because they're going through water, so that's going to help with speed. Sure. to um, catch their prey. Yeah, the tortoise's shell is a lot heavier. Oh my gosh, yeah. the Mojave is quite heavy. Um, and to also escape a predator. Sure. Right, and of course, and then she's tucking in her head and her legs and she can do all that. Mm -hmm. We lift her out here, you'll see that maybe if she'll let me have one, maybe not. Or put it back in the water. Um, she's got webbed feet. Again, she does. Built for in. Swimming. There we go. Nice long legs. Oh, much yeah. Look longer at those long than you legs. think. Oh, they're so long. And then she's got a very long tail. Of course, that's the rudder, so that it helps to maneuver yeah. underneath water. Um, so yeah. So she spends half the day or half the time um, outside of the water, and so she's terrestrial. Uh, she's a terrestrial. Uh, a terrestrial turtle. Yeah, a terrestrial that turtle. That makes sense. Yeah. Most, I mean, I think so with being spending 200 days and make her more terrestrial. Maybe yeah. she's aquatic. I don't know. Somebody could probably correct me on that. But yeah, um, but yeah she uh, she loves both times. She likes inside and outside. So I go. love this setup that you have for Thank her. Thank you. How many pools does Marla have? She has three. She has um, three pools just for herself, huh? Yeah. So she's got a pool that she is in uh, inside the museum. This is her outdoor pool. This is the outdoor spa. This is where, you know, she gets a lot of that good vitamin D from the sun. Sure. Real good for her shell. And then um, I just got a huge 70-gallon um, tank to do for a lap pool for her during the winter because we won't be able to do this. Um, so it's got a filter, it's got a power head, so she'll be able to have a little swimming pool. Oh, so inside. funny. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Marla. Yeah, but it's right by um, you know, a window, so again, she'll get that nice um, sunlight coming in. She'll have a sure. basking area, but she'll also have a current a so current she can to swim against so she can called, keep her pools. oh <laughs> yes yes and yeah she's got a current and so she can you know keep that girlish figure absolutely because you got to be swimsuit ready all the time uh, you do if you're especially if you're a turtle if you're a western pond yep, turtle absolutely no well, Melissa, this has been fascinating as Thank always. You. Such a treat to get to hang out with our lovely Marla. And of course, Vladimir, you bring so much to any recording. Yes. 
<laughs> Thank you for your contribution, Vladimir. Thank you for your contribution, Vladimir. Thank you for joining us, everybody. We're going to be back uh, next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what we'll be doing, mm -hmm. but something fascinating, no doubt. Everybody stay safe, stay well. We're so worried about everybody that's up in the path of the fires. Yeah. Take care of yourselves, my goodness. And uh, keep wearing your mask, six feet apart. All of that good stuff. We'll see you next